Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a 4-bit shift register using D flip-flops. The flip-flop I'm going to use is a CD4013BE. The reason I'm using uh, chips rather than transistors is that this circuit would take upwards of 50 transistors and would make it very difficult to actually make. The pinout for this chip I got on datasheetcatalog.org. It's sketched here, so if you have the notch to your left, you have high, top left, ground, bottom right, the pins are Q1, not Q1, clock, clear, D1, set 1, ground. You have high, Q2, not Q2, clock, clear, D2, set 2. So you have flip-flop 1 at the bottom, flip-flop 2 on the, right, on the top. So let's discuss how you physically build a shift register and how it works. So first of all I'll show you how to, be, how to make it. So each of these is a flip-flop. Uh, I'm not going to use set or reset and for reasons that I've explained in other videos I'm going to tie those down to ground via 100 kilo ohm resistors. Okay, so all inputs will be tied down to ground but because these ones aren't being used they won't, they'll only have one wire coming from them. Clock and D, they are also inputs so they will also be tied down to ground via 100 kilo ohm resistors but they will also have their usual inputs clock and D. Not Q or is, is not being used, so that's physically not connected. The reason that is not tied down to ground is because it is an, in, it is an output. Uh, if you tie it down to ground, you'll affect the, affect the output of your, of your flip-flop. The indicators I'm using are LEDs, and I'm going to have them from uh, coming at, at, at basically the Q of each one of, the, of, each one of my flip-flops. They will obviously have to be tied down to ground, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So how does uh, your register or your flip-flop, your register but on, and you need your flip-flops work? You have to remember that your D flip-flops are, uh, they're, we'll say, they're coordinated, they're, they're clocked. So which means that they'll only read in or read out information when a clock pulse is high. Now in this case, all my clocks are connected. Which means this flip-flop and this one will only read in and read out information at the same time. So that's very important. So how does it work? Why is it called a shift register? It's called a shift register because as the clock pulses come in, the values of, of, of the registers are shifted to the right. So initially at the first clock pulse, this flip-flop reads in its the, the input. The, the second clock pulse shifts the, input, the, the shifts the previous input over here and reads in a new one. And the third one, this flip-flop shifts across its value, reads in the previous one from this one and this flip-flop reads in the new one, the new the new value. You can see very very good um, either applets or just diagrams of this online, but it's it's pretty it's pretty simple, especially when you see it physically made, which you will in a moment. So say for example you want to read in a one zero one signal. Now this uh, one zero one so it's a high, a low and a high. So I have three bits coming in on my D and if a pulse train here on my on my clock square waves. So initially, this flip-flop is low and so is this one. So we have a zero, a zero. And I'll say there's a third one here, but I, I physically haven't drawn it, of course. So the first clock pulse comes in, and this flip-flop reads in. Actually, it's better work. The first clock pulse comes in. This flip-flop reads in the value of this one, because the, the D and Q are connected. This is low, so nothing happens, right? So it reads in a zero, and it's not changed. This flip-flop reads in the first value of D. In this case we'll say it's a 1, so it becomes a 1. So essentially on the first clock pulse, third flip-flop read it in, read in this uh, this Q, which was a 0, this one read in this Q, which is a 0, this one read in D, which was a 1. So now I have a 1, 0, 0. The next clock pulse comes in and the third flip-flop reads in Q, so that's a 0. The second one reads in this Q and becomes a 1, so the, the value has been shifted across, and this one reads in the new value of D, which in this case would be a 0. So I now have a 0, 1, 0. The third clock pulse comes in, in this case it's a 1, so we'd have this flip-flop reading in a 1 from here, this one reading in a 0 from here, and this one reading in a 1 from D. So now I have a 1, 0, 1 in my shift register after using three clock pulses. Just in case 
we're kind of confused as physically how to build it. I think this should show exactly what I've built. Now this is only a two-bit shift register, so I'm going to physically show you how to build a four one. But you can just extend, you extend this. It should be quite, it could, should be quite straightforward. I'm going to use this between six, seven, eight, or nine volts. All of those really work. Uh, I'd, I'd advise using a potentiometer as it just makes life easier. And there's down here is my my low line. Flip flop one, flip flop two. So first of all, my clock. Let's see my, where my clock is. My clock is this blue line here. So I know it's it's I've I've connected to high, but I've I've physically done that slightly differently in on my breadboard. I'll show you that in a moment. The point I wanted to show you, show you here is the clock is connected to both flip flop one and flip flop two and three and four. So they're all connected to the clock at the same time. D, your input, there is only one input. Okay, so the only way of putting information into your register is through this this switch here into D. All of my inputs which are D, clock, reset and set, all of them are tied to ground via 100 kilo ohm resistors. Here, 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 and here. Not Q is not connected. The Q's and D's are all connected here and we'll say if there's another one over here. However, this obviously D here is just connected to your input. I'm using a, an LED indicator for each of my Q's. The way you do this is you, your branch, you go to your LED and down to ground. Your branch, go to your LED and down to ground. And I think that, that that should be reasonably clear. If it's not, just put a comment on my page. So you're going to have to give me a moment to set this up. Because I Right, we're not looking too bad at the moment. So I'm sure that looks that looks pretty dodgy. That that looks pretty dodgy and difficult, but it's not. Now before I continue, before I show you exactly what I've done, uh, you, it took me a while to figure this out. But your your register and indeed your flip flops will really only work when you actually have a clock pulse coming in. So just for example, you know, physically tying or having a wire going from high and taking it out to give a low, that won't work. So you physically have to have some sort of an oscillator or a square wave generator. Um, I've shown you how to build this in previous videos. So what I have down here, I have two square wave generators. I'm just going to move these capacitors so you can see it. That LED there is one, uh, indicates one, and that one there indicates another one. So you can see this one is flashing. It's flashing away. That's flashing away making a square wave. Notice the frequency here is lower than the frequency here. Just to point out what I've used, I've used 2 by 470 uh, microfarad capacitors here. I've used 600 ohm resistors and the normal NPN transistor. Look at the previous video, I've just worked it out, but they're the values I've used. And this one I've used 2200 microfarad capacitors. And uh, I've also actually slightly adjusted the resistance, so I have basically 3 by 600 ohm resistors here and have 2 by 600 ohm and 1 by 400 ohm here. So it doesn't really matter, you can play around with this yourself to get the get the frequency right. I'm just going to turn this off and I'll see it slightly better. Yeah, you can... Yeah, I'll give you a close-up now in a moment. Actually, I'll give you a close-up now. So you got to remember, you'll see this in my previous video, that you need 12 volts coming in to do this. So what I have here is, here's my power. And I'm bringing my power down I'm powering this oscillator here and feed this small green wire there I'm powering this oscillator so I have a high frequency and a low frequency oscillator so I'm given two different sets of square waves you might be able to work out why I'm doing that as well but I'll tell you that in a moment next next I have two chips two black chips up here 
Now I'm bringing in 12, 13 volts through my batteries, but these will only, these won't these chips won't take that. So I'm using a potentiometer, which I've used on all my chips. And if if you don't really understand what that what's happening there, look at the previous video. And after that, I've done exactly what I've uh, I've said I've done in the uh, in the circuit diagram. So I've connected the inputs as I should have, connected the outputs as I should have. And if you notice, I have a big pile of resistors here and here, and they're tying all my inputs down to ground. The yellow wires here are my outputs, and I have four outputs. I have one, two, three, four. So that's the first bit, second bit, third bit, fourth bit. So what I've done is, uh, I've connected, this is a very high frequency a square wave. So I've connected that to my clock, and this lower frequency square wave I've connected to D. So what should happen is D will go high and because this is oscillating a lot quicker it will the clock will shift that that value across my register and then it, then a new value of D will go in. So yeah it should it should work reasonably well. I'm gonna try and give you a close up here. And at the same time I'll show you my uh, circuit diagram. So this flip flop here is at the bottom. This one here is that's the second one. Down here is the third one. Up here is the fourth one. I have clock and D coming in here, and from there I've branched them out to each of the each of the flip flops. I've used 100 kilo ohm resistors on all my all my inputs, and with this this red wire here. The, some of these white wires, they're connecting the D's and the Q's. Now like I said, I'm not going to go into as much detail in regard to building this as I would have done in previous videos. It should be straightforward, it, and definitely if you've done or can, can do what I've done in other videos. If it's not, just... Okay, so I've just fixed my uh, power problems. So just a quick recap there before you, before you finish. We have high frequency clock pulse coming in we have a low frequency input pulse coming in here they're going via these green wires into my register and then they're, they're being shifted across the register there so you can actually see it's going see it's shifting across now what I did notice is it seems here that these two um, these two inputs there they seem to be actually going at the same time now I've noticed that when I play around with my, with my input voltage, that does change. So I'm having some problems at the moment, so I'm not going to change that. The point still stands. If you can get up to here, you're able to play around with it and get it going. So uh, that's how you build a 4-bit shift register.